I think other people can be really supportive in being there, being a presence, say, hey, if you need to talk about it, I'm here. I think it's on, I think it's asking, not assuming that you know what the person needs or wants. So I'd really like to support you in this. Is, you know, what, what, what would be helpful? What can I do? The most obvious thing is just listen and don't be a I don't think it's a bad thing to offer help. I think it's a really good thing, but you have to be ready for the answer to be no. And you have to wait for the answer first. And then you have to actually listen to the answer. And then like, if someone's fine, just be like, okay, and back the f off. And if they're not fine, then ask them what they need. Don't just like grab at their handles and like tip them out of the chair like a wheelbarrow. Cause that's just, oh, it's um, happened too many times. <laughs> If I meet you for the first time, I'm out to say, I'll to tell up there and so if you can't understand me or vice versa, just be extra patient or ask to repeat yourself and vice versa. Uh, it's quite different. I find with some people, they'd be more sensitive in that they might see me as, no, I understand what's going on. They, they kind of step in, they go, okay, I'll repeat what's going on there, which is very helpful of them because I don't ask them to do that and I kind of don't want to put that onto them in that, that wouldn't mind. Listen to the lived experience of the person. Encourage them to connect to community because that's actually going, like peer support is actually going to be the thing that keeps that person feeling okay. But yeah, I think reading the room for me is just the, the first and the, like the biggest thing. Like sometimes I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes through people's best intentions, they'll send me content on it the unsolicited information bit can like or like unsolicited conversation can be a bit annoying sometimes if I'm like having a nice day not thinking about it not wanting to think about it and it just derails you because like oh that's right I have this thing that everyone can see lol oh the queer community is not accessible <laughs> it wishes it was that's changing I think there's a lot of improvements happening in a lot of spaces we're seeing more events being Auslan interpreted we're seeing more events have wheelchair access and wheelchair access that's not just like the door not having steps it's like there is a bathroom can I pee will I have to just dehydrate for the entire evening which is not fun and you don't want to do that and you will get a UTI. I mean, obviously in the deaf community there's a range of gay strength and whatever uh, a party for the deaf gay person it's easy to because they know what the access requirements are and they provide accessible requirements in terms of interpreting or closed captioning services. I've been very fortunate that I've never experienced transphobia with a service provider. I feel really blessed because my current service provider's taken me like business attire shopping on Monday. That kind of broke me heart. I went and had a little happy tear for a change when I left. They were just so supportive. There's still a way to go in the general community as well as the LGBTIQ community. I feel like I'm really fortunate in terms of the social circles and the spaces that I move in. Disability is very well regarded and people's needs are respected and considered. In terms of going out to venues and things like that, a lot of venues probably don't deal with disability anywhere near as well as they should. I think there's a lot of community education that needs to happen, not, not really just so much in the community, but the structures around it. So things like security guards accessing a venue, cerebral palsy affects the way I walk, and it's often hard for me to get a cab home on the weekends because people think I'm drunk. It's not just the fact that a lot of events are inaccessible, it's that they don't say it on the event. So I feel like I'm constantly in this position of having to ask and then have people get defensive about it. And I'm like, I'm not trying to start a fight. I just want to know if I can go to the party. I'm noticing that in the last five years, there seems to be a huge shift generally in mainstream and probably queer cultures as well. Just more of an awareness that there's a wide spectrum of people with physical and mental disabilities that might have specific needs that need accommodating. So I do think it's changing.